things first. Who, what can we expect from the new album? Producers, MCs. We're not really leaking that information yet. Not are you? I'd love to tell you because. You yeah, know, it's a little. You're, you're a good supporter, but this, this record, we're not announcing dates. We're not announcing producers. We're not announcing who's on it. Nothing. I kind of announced one one guest today though on Twitter. <laughs> so this is one guest, Thurston Howell. Thurston he Howell might not third. really be on. Nah, he's gonna be on. He might. <laughs> he's gonna be on it, but but I yeah. Today I revealed that. Okay. What can we expect different from a brand you can trust until the new album? There's gotta be it's a little bit tell us. The masses of the dark arts. You know, it's dark. Tyler, it's harder, it's just not, it's, it's, there's nothing like the stain on this record, and it's not, so okay. far, it's not, both songs are dope, it's not gonna be, I mean, it is what it is, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't, you know, of course, I'll, I don't say that to, to sit, to, to uh, criticize the record, the previous record, mm -hmm. just why make the same record, you know, again, you know what I mean, it's boring, you gotta always flip it up. Let's talk about... The influence that you did with Heavy Metal Kings, your solo album, when you guys come into La Coca Nostra as a full group, those different influences that you bring from the other things you've done, how do they affect Coca? I don't think those are influences. I think that's other projects that we do. You know, like, I mean, you know it's like if you mix vodka and orange juice, it takes one it tastes one way. If you mix vodka or something else, it tastes, it tastes another way. So Heavy Metal Kings, it's Heavy Metal Kings. My solo shit is my solo shit. When you got La Coca, you got different. Thing. It's not one influences the other, it's me influence individually as different elements each project. You know what I'm Can you guys talk a little bit lyrically about where you're going to go with Polka? Because the last album was, I mean, as far as hip hop, hip hop is concerned, I mean, you guys really touched on a little bit more than most hip hop groups do. You addressed a lot of situations, yeah, and a lot of a lot's changed in the world since then. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, that's kind of what we do. I mean, for me. You know, just coming up, always listening to hardcore and metal too. It's like I almost take more of that kind of a, an approach lyrically than a lot of a lot of hip hop stuff. Not to say that hip hop isn't social and socially conscious. In, you know, going back even to Grandmaster Flash and all that. So it's like that's an influence in the beginning and all that kind of stuff. You know. But you know, political, anti-political, whatever it is, it's gonna always it's gonna be in the music. So you know. We're all, we're all, you know, we pay attention to what's going on with all of this, uh, the world around us and, and allowing that to, to come into the lyrics, you know? Great. That's another question I wanted to lead into was uh, outside of hip-hop influence. I know you were interviewed at the uh, Big Four concert. You talked about your influence of metal. But outside of hip hop, what influences you guys in your writing? What influences you in your music? And obviously, the lyrics. Bill first. Um, musically, like what music musically and lyrically, what really influences you outside of hip hop? Outside of hip hop, um, you know, just my my library is insane. Like just, I'm a book collector, so it's like I just like to read all different stuff. A lot of nonfiction. I don't really I don't really read too much fiction. Uh, it's pretty much just nonfiction. There was a pun in there. Yeah, it didn't mean for that. <laughs> but yeah, so there was a pun in there. Yeah, you know, just just a lot of that, and, and um, almost biographical. I like like to do that almost at least once an album. If you pay attention to any album I'm involved in, there's something biographical, something from the point of view of somebody else, kind of like um, taking on that persona of that person. Usually. 99.9% .9 of the time, somebody from the family, somebody from the family that you read about, somebody that did something probably pretty fucked up, you know? Yeah. So. Slain, outside of hip hop, what influences you in your music and your I mean, I think, you know, anything that's going on in life influences me. Personal situations, you know, what's going on in the world, uh, you know, even just directly, just on this tour, me and Bill building on certain shit or whatever, or we'll be on the phone talking shit, you know, could be me and Danny, could be me and Bill, whatever, and getting into, you know, sometimes I, I get on the phone with him and be like two or three hours go by, and I won't even realize it, it'll just be, ah, blah, blah, blah. That's it, we chop it up a lot on the phone because we live in different cities, right? So it's like we do definitely do a lot of phone combos. Danny has come up with a bunch of different concepts on the record. You know, and it's always been that way. You know, it's very creative. 
yeah, just sometimes Bella lay something down first, or I lay something down first, and then that influences me too. I think we influence each other. You know, like I'll even hit Bill up and be like, "Damn, man, you fucking made my job hot on this one." You know, and then I gotta go there with it, and I, you know, I think it's kind of the same thing with with everybody in the group. So, yeah, we kind of do that. We it's like a friendly competition amongst brothers, you know, and, and that, that's what keeps our sword sharp. You know, that's like, you know, I don't, we don't we don't really associate with whack motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? It's like pretty much anybody that we fuck with. Is dope. You know what I mean? like, like, we're pretty critical of, of, of shit. You know what I mean? We, kind of, we have experience in this in this shit as far as being fans. Outside of just listening, you know, from an artistic point of view, we listen as fans to music. And a lot of shit out there sucks. Most of our homies, you know, are the best in the game. Our, our, our homies are the best in the game. We grow with a lot of legendary dudes, man. It's like, you gotta keep your game shot. Dudes that have been doing it longer than us. You know what I mean? You know, some dudes just may be a little younger too, you know what I mean? It's like all across the spectrum. Our team is the best. Right. Yeah, you you think new guys like producers like Sea Lance, for example, a little bit of a step up and in, in, in the game and whatnot. Is that important to you? Is that what you want to do? You wanna bring up guys that are on the same level as yourself? Sea Lance is a beast. Sea Lance you you could contrast what Sea Lance does as a as a young dude in his early twenties, contrast that to a dude named Lethal. That's a legend. And yet they both chop it up on the phone and email beats back and forth to each other. And, and it's like a mutual respect, regardless of how long either of them have been in the game. I mean, it comes down to skills at the end of the day. You know, if you look back to the early days of Coca, that's how I was. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was the dude that people were just like, you know what I'm saying? See the man next to Bill and have a laugh. He brought an energy into, into, into the Coca. That wasn't that, you know what I mean? Everybody brought something different. He brought that 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 new energy, being the youngest dude in the group, and just that fire that like, just was really like the spark in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Literally, literally, literally. Like with producers, and with, it's always good to have like a fresh approach and sound and somebody who's really hype on it and shit. So it's good to, you know, you know, just it started with him and and Danny. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was Danny taking me out of nowhere to kind of put me on, you know, right. sign a production deal with Lethal early on before any of that, that stuff happened. But you know, you always gotta look. Town respects town. You know? So when you see like a young dude like Sam X who's really dope, you know, it's not like oh who the fuck are you? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like yo, let's do get some fire. And how's the tour been so far? Have you guys played in the stuff or how's the crowd been as far as the We've been doing we've been doing a lot of album stuff. Because this is the first time up in Canada for you guys, right? Yeah, the first time the Coke has been been on tour up here. Yeah, we've never been on it. Right. And um yeah, that's why we've been doing a lot of writing trust stuff. Solo stuff as well, you know, just balancing it out. The Coke has always done that regardless. Mm -hmm. Um but you know, just just a, 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 a like a a, a taste like a smorgasbord <coughs> sorts, you know, just like everything we do. Yeah, anytime we're doing coca shows, we do stuff from raw fiction, house of pain, slang, special team, whatever it is. But, uh, you know, this tour is a little different. It's coca, but, you know, Eric couldn't get into the country. And, you know, we have a different, it's a different show than we've done as coca because it's. We know, ain't doing we jump around. We ain't, there's no jump around tonight. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But, you know, we dipped into, you know, a lot of non fiction stuff, some. some some Bill stuff, some slaying stuff, some coca stuff. It's all, it's all coca. Anyways, at the end of the day, so everything we do, you know, look, coca is a, is a, is a crew. It's not just like a hip hop group. It's a, it's, it's a crew. Like Wu Tang, AOTP, right? You know what I mean? So,
Okay, yeah, what up? This is Slane representing for Action Recon. This is Ill Bill, Action Recon, y'all.